And here are some of the changes Mr. Wheelis asked about. Okay. Yeah, that one, the one in the 80s where they tax Social Security benefits. Mm -hmm. they, I remember they also, um, you used to be able, when you were in the Marine Corps, you used to be able to not have your wages taxed because you were getting paid by the government. Right, but then they, <laughs> then they changed. Yeah. yeah. I love this illustration. Because <laughs> it perfectly that? points out to what politicians have to do. Especially presidents. Wait, what are those horses saying? Liberals. Conservative, liberal. And that is FDR. Trying to ride, trying to keep them together. And they often point in different directions. Okay. Uh, and I think this perfectly illustrates the kind of challenges that any president faces in his administration. The other thing I want to point out about these cartoons about Roosevelt is that he's always walking or running. He's always walking or running. Again, the cartoonists don't focus upon his disability. There was growing opposition. The opposition, by the way, began after the first hundred days. So the honeymoon was short-lived. Again, there's Roosevelt standing, looking cheerful, optimistic. The American people are looking toward a brighter future, but behind him is the cause of the depression and his detractors. Notice they all have the top hats of business. Then. Some of his biggest detractors were uh, business people, but there were detractors on the left side of the spectrum as well. Oh. <clears throat> so what did they have say? First of all, those who criticized Roosevelt said that his spending uh, was out of control, that much of that spending was engaged in wasteful kind of spending, and there was too much regulation, that he was killing the free market economy uh, with things like the SEC, for example, Securities and Exchange Commission. Others said, no, he's not doing enough. Yeah, unemployment is still high. Many people are not being helped by the New Deal. In fact, the same people who have brought this depression, businessmen, brokers, and bankers, the three Bs, are still exercising power in this country. And we need to regulate them more, and the way that we do that is we nationalize everything. So he's not gone far enough. <clears throat> is what he's doing constitutional? There's a lot of gray area on what Roosevelt is doing and the law that he's enacting. And are his actions as president constitutional? And he's dangerous. He may smile, he may be ebullient, he may be reassuring, but really underneath he is a stark raving mad dictator. And anybody who stands in his way is in danger. Um, when we're talking about uh, social welfare programs, and those those can be really nice for a lot of the portion of the people who can't afford to work for themselves or they're handicapped or something like that, but they're obviously really expensive to maintain. What do the U.S. budget and debts look like at this time? Because my question is, where are they getting the money from to fund these programs to rake leaves and then dump them and then rake them up again? Yeah. Yeah. How does the U.S. economy factor? Where do they get the money for all this? They're, they're engaged in some deficit spending. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, I don't have the chart with me, but you see uh, in a chart that deficit spending begins to go up with Herbert Hoover, but it increases more dramatically under the New Deal. Okay. And that really worries Roosevelt, that they're becoming too dependent on deficit spending. He believes in a balanced budget. Mm -hmm. And so in 1937, he begins to cut back much of the funding for these programs and it creates a severe recession. We, uh, you know, we do not come out of the Great Depression, uh, ladies and gentlemen, until Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. 
the great the New Deal, no matter what you think about it, does not end the Great Depression. It is World War II that ends the Great Depression. So who are some of his critics? The conservatives, this is what they are. They argued that the New Deal and what FDR was promoting was socialism. That we were becoming more indebted as a nation, that we were passing on this debt to future generations who would have to carry that burden beyond them. That's one of the things that we hear today, uh, is that the debt that we've acquired is not going to be assumed by uh, the current generation, but by future generations. It wasted money on relief and encouraged idleness. That we were destroying the very foundation of what American individualism was. That we were now creating a nation of dependents who could be not only bought, but easily manipulated politically. It violated the Constitution and states' rights. And the president was becoming too powerful that the checks and balances created by the Founding Fathers were not only in danger, but they were under attack. One of the more vocal opponents was a group that called itself the Liberty League. another complaint of the Liberty League, that there was too much government interference in the lives of a business, but also in the lives of people. As I told one, one of you in, in this class, you know, the New Deal really did in some ways intrude upon people's lives. For example, um, it, it created documentary uh, films that were shown in theaters on how to properly cross the street. Another one uh, was how to properly breastfeed your child. You know, uh, people said, we don't need to be told by the government how to cross the street or breastfeed our children. What, what, what is this? What kind of control are we uh, talking about here? Okay. So sometimes it, there was overreach by the New Deal agencies. Uh, in fact, the New Deal even tried to uh, place codes of fair competition on prostitution. It opposed the FDR because it took the United States off the gold standard. It opposed FDR and the New Deal because of its regulation and regulatory agencies. It opposed the New Deal on FDR because of its tax and spend policies. It opposed the New Deal because it gave labor too much power. And the members are interesting. Al Smith. Remember him? What? what that Al Smith? Yeah. Who is, what is Al Smith that you're talking about? The one that was kind of shepherd at APR, the New York political scene? Yeah. He was, a, in fact, <clears throat> remember he ran in 1928 against Herbert Hoover? Uh -huh. And he lost because he was a Catholic, he was rigging wet, and he was a child of immigrants. He was also a died in the wool Democrat. So he's one of the leading voices in the Liberty League against the FDR and the New Deal. Hugh Johnson, who was the first administrator of the NIRA, also became a vocal opponent of FDR. So I'm not just, I'm not just talking about you know, uh, uh, Republican conservatives. Uh, the opposition came from a whole spectrum of Americans, regardless of political affiliation. John W. Davis, 
John Jacob Raskob, the financier. Back when I lived in Michigan, I lived on Raskob Street. Dean Acheson, who would become a well-known uh, Secretary of State and foreign uh, uh, official, uh, a foreign policy official. Herbert Hoover, who argued that we were on the road to socialism or worse. So this is quite a, uh, uh, a formidable group of opponents that FDR had to face. Those of you can see this, this is uh, communist schemers. And here's FDR feeding the socialist wolf. They argued that FDR's solution to everything would spend more money. This is from the Chicago Tribune, and it shows uh, the radical, communist, socialistic leading Democrats that are leading the spending wagon. Oh, they got Uncle Joe in the background. What's that? They got Uncle Joe in the background. Yep, and uh, here's, here's Stalin over here. Yeah. Yeah. And here's uh, uh, Bolshevik. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy in the picture here is uh, Andrew Millen. This illustration shows that the crime by the business interest really is unfounded because in the background in our newspaper clippings that show uh, that these uh, corporations continue to make huge profits even in depression time. They always have the common man toting the tax burden, but it's really the rich that we're getting slammed with. Yeah, it, yeah, they're saying that, and, and that's that's typical uh, strategy. You, you say that the, you know, you don't say, well, the rich, poor, rich are being made to carry the burden of taxes. You say it's you guys that are carrying it, the yeah. everyday Americans. Mm -hmm. And again, here pointing to the heavy tax burden that faces Americans if they continue to support the New Deal. One rumor went around that FDR liked to feast on the businessmen for breakfast. <laughs> And as if to prove business people right, the Revenue Act of 1935 became known as the Wealth Act Tax. It was called by others the Soak the Rich Tax. It placed a tax of 75% on income 
over a million dollars. Can you imagine how that would go over today? <clears throat> a million dollars isn't what it used to be. <laughs> hey, I'll take a million dollars. No, I, I, I know. But I'm just saying. So it was, I know it's not what it used to be, but I won't, I won't sniff at it. Yeah, this is true. But I'm just saying, what would it be now? Oh, it, yeah. It taxes states, skip taxes, and excess profits. I love this. Uh, this is a wealthy family, and the child is saying, Mom, uh, Jimmy wrote a dirty word. <laughs> Roosevelt on the sidewalk. They felt that the New Deal was socialistic. <laughs> that the New Deal was a fellow travel with the Communist International. That FDR was hungry for more power. <clears throat> and that Roosevelt was a power hungry dictator. So, after he did pack the courts, was there a lot changed? He didn't pack the court. Oh, he tried. He tried. Okay. Yeah. So those of us who think that presidents, presidents of the recent era have been nothing more than dictatorial tyrants or would be, it's not new. I mean, even the most beloved of presidents have been accused of being tyrants. One person who was heavily criticized for being a tyrant and suspending habeas corpus was uh, Abraham Lincoln during the Civil War. Mm -hmm. So, could you explain a little bit further about this idea of packing the courts? It, he attempted to do that, and would that have been strictly illegal at the time? Let me show you something. Move you ahead here, if I can move this. Let me show you something here. It's not illegal. Here are the number of justices. There's nothing in the Constitution that limits the number of justices on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. okay. And you can see that, you know, in 1869, 1866, 1863, the number of justices fluctuated greatly. Okay. But what Roosevelt did was considered to be beyond the pale. What he proposed was replacing justices who were voting against his laws. <laughs> And he tried to cover it up by saying that these justices, most of who were over 70, were too old and too overworked. And he was trying to be nice to them by providing them with a justice to support their work. Come on. <laughs> you know, if you believe that, I've got some swamp land I want to sell you in Florida. <laughs> you know? So that's what happened to Roosevelt. All right. Thank you for your attention. I'm going to give you back your quizzes. I will see you on uh, the 12th.